Hey guys, so today I will be taking a look at the latest early voting results that have come out for the 2020 presidential election, taking a look at how those numbers are currently standing for both Joe Biden and Donald Trump. So on this electoral map right here, we have 226 safe for electoral votes for Joe Biden to 125 for President Trump. And first, I'm just going to go over how each candidate is going to win this election. But before I get into that, make sure you join my Discord server if you have not. The link is at the very top of the description below. We're doing many events, giveaways, and contests there. We also have a mock government that's pretty fun on that service. Make sure you join so you don't miss out on that. Again, the link is at the very top of the description below. And in addition to that, I have also launched channel memberships on this channel for just 99 cents and you get access to some pretty sweet perks. Just click on that blue join button next to the subscribe button if you're interested. So moving on to the video here, as you can see, Joe Biden, 226 electoral votes. This is every single state that Clinton won in 2016, with the exception of the state of Nevada, which out of all the Clinton states is the closest state this time around, pulling in favor of Joe Biden by around 6% and went to Clinton by 2.5% four percent in 2016. Now for Joe Biden to win, I'm sure everybody already knows the three states that he needs to win, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Three states that Trump won by less than 1% in 2016, and three states in which Joe Biden has been performing pretty well in, has been leading for months consistently here by at least 6%, around 4 to 5% at its worst for Joe Biden in Pennsylvania, around 8, 9% at its best. Right now, it's in the middle of there, around 6, 7% for Joe Biden in Pennsylvania. It is still a little bit over 7%, almost 8% in Michigan, and then a little bit under 7% in Wisconsin as of right now. Now, these three states, Joe Biden polls at 50%, which means that as long as he wins all of the voters that are expected to vote for him, he will win these three states. In 2016, Clinton polled at around 46 to 47% in these three states, and that is exactly the amount of the vote she won. She did not lose any support. She did not gain any support in the last couple of days. Trump was able to massively overform and win those undecided voters. Clinton did not do any worse than what her polling numbers were. And if Joe Biden does the same thing, he cannot lose these three states. So that's 278 for Joe Biden. And this is the simplest pathway to victory right now. He also leads in Arizona, Florida, North Carolina, Iowa, and Georgia. He, the only two states that Joe Biden is not leading are Ohio and Texas. Now, for President Trump to win this election, we're going to have to make a lot of calls that are going to be a little bit doubtful. So, for President Trump to win, he would have to win Texas. If Joe Biden wins Texas, I mean he wins the election. Now, this is all based on the assumption that he's not going to win Nevada. I don't think Trump stands a chance in Nevada. Just like I don't think Joe Biden's going to win Texas, but I think that Joe Biden has a better chance of winning Nevada than Trump has of winning Texas. So the state of Nevada, that's, that would be the first state for Donald Trump. Next would probably be the state of Ohio. So before, I would have said Iowa because Iowa went to Trump by almost 10%, Ohio by almost 9% in 2016. But now, taking a look at the most recent numbers, I think Ohio is definitely performing better, not just from one poll, but from quite a few polls. I think that Ohio is performing better for the current president than Iowa, which I think is pretty surprising. The state of Iowa, a Biden or a Obama state in 2008 and 2012, I think will go to Trump for a second time in 2020. So that would put Trump up at 187. Now, a lot of these, I think that Trump doesn't have the best chance of winning. I think Georgia is going to be very, very close. Could definitely see it going to Joe Biden. But with the voter suppression occurring in the South, I will put Georgia into the column for Donald Trump. Next, the state of Florida. He would have to win Florida. This is one of Trump's most important states. You know, people are saying how Joe Biden's most important state is Pennsylvania. Trump's is Florida, but in reality, Trump needs to win basically every single one of these states. Every single state is very important for Trump because he is losing in almost all of them. So Florida, that is going to be another state that we're going to have to give to Trump. And this only puts him up at 232 electoral votes after winning his five safest seats from, or not seats, his five safest states out of these battleground states. So he would also have to win North Carolina, which I think is a little bit of a stretch. I currently expect it to go to Joe Biden, but Trump can definitely win it. He won it last time. It's been a Republican state since 2012. And I mean, I don't think Joe Biden is going to do that well here, but I think that he is going to flip this state by a really, really small margin. You know, Obama won the state by just 0.3% in 2008. I think we could see those types of numbers here. It can get really, really close in North Carolina. And then Arizona, we would also have to give to President Trump. 
this would put him at 258 electoral votes and now we have three more states left. He either has to win two out of these three states if he wins Wisconsin or one if he wins Michigan or Pennsylvania. I think Michigan definitely has the smallest chance of going to Joe Biden. Now these two districts, I would give Nebraska second to Joe Biden as of right now. He's pulling better here than he is in Nevada. But the second district of Maine, I will give to Donald Trump. I still think Joe Biden has a great chance of winning this, but for this simulation here, I'm going to give it to Trump. So that puts Trump at 259. So that's why he can't just win Wisconsin and get to 270 electoral votes. Because if we did, then we would, of course, have a 269, a 269 tie in the Electoral College. So President Trump would, would have to win Wisconsin or he have to win the, uh, one of these other two states or Wisconsin and any of these two states. So essentially what this means is that no matter how Trump wins the election, he has to win either Michigan or Pennsylvania. And I do not think that he's going to win Michigan. I think Joe Biden will win Michigan even in a very bad night for Joe Biden. I think he will almost definitely overperform Hillary Clinton. I mean, it's just so hard to imagine a scenario where Biden does worse than Clinton. I mean, Clinton had so much baggage. She was a very flawed candidate. She did you know, very poorly among very important groups. You know, she definitely underperformed Barack Obama in so, so many ways. But Joe Biden, I think that he's going to get those voters in Flint and Detroit that did not come out for Clinton in 2016. I think those voters this time around are definitely going to come out and vote for Joe Biden. I think Pennsylvania will also see record numbers for the former vice president. And I think we're going to have the highest turnout in American history in terms of voters turning out. Wisconsin, Michigan, or Wisconsin, uh, Pennsylvania, these two states, Trump would have to win Pennsylvania if he wants to win the election. That would be a little bit of a stretch. You know, Trump is doing worse in Pennsylvania than Biden is doing in Alaska. You know, think about that. Trump is doing worse in Pennsylvania, a state that he won in 2016, that he is in Alaska, than Biden is in Alaska, a state that Democrats have not won in decades, and a state that was solid for Trump in 2016, Mitt Romney in 2012, Dominic McCain in 2008, and keep going back and back. Alaska has been a very solid Republican state, but this time around it seems as if it is not. So Pennsylvania, 20 electoral votes. That would have to go to Trump for him to win. Wisconsin can go either way. So Wisconsin really isn't too important on this map be just because it's 10 electoral votes. If it was 11, I think it would be definitely a lot more important. But Pennsylvania, 20 electoral votes, that would have to be the biggest stretch on this map. And that's the only way for Trump to get to 270. Do I think this is going to occur? No, but do I think that Trump can definitely win some states that we don't like really expect him to? Definitely yes. Now, what that means is there's just so many close races. I mean, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida. I do expect North Carolina and Georgia to go to Joe Biden, but I definitely would not be surprised if they still voted for Trump. Georgia, I I am honestly 50-50 in that state. Arizona, I think, will go to Joe Biden, but I wouldn't be too surprised. I would be a lot more surprised than if, you know, these two states went to Trump. Trump, but I wouldn't be too surprised, but if these Rush Belt states go to Trump, I would be pretty surprised, and that would be pretty surprising to see Trump actually flip these three states, or not flip, uh, you know, continue to carry them. I say flip because at this point, they have just become so solid for Joe Biden. So 232, 122, this should be 125 electoral votes. Yeah, Alaska, that will go to Trump, so I don't know why I put that in the lean column earlier, but 125 for Donald Trump, 232 for Joe Biden from their safe and likely states. So taking a look at the early voting results, now this is just a New York Times article talking about just how many people have voted. I mean, 42 million Americans have already voted in this election. That is 30% of the votes that were cast in 2016 alone. And we still have 13 days or 13 days as of, as of when they wrote this. There's definitely more as of right now. We only have nine days until the election. So record turnout in terms of early votes and i think that we will definitely smash records in terms of how many americans come out to vote this time around i mean texas is breaking records um as you can see 5.3 million votes in texas that those were the amounts that were cast four years ago and and then 4.7 this time around, I'm pretty sure. So Texas has cast a huge number of votes. Actually, I'm not sure. I think this is 5.3 million for Trump in 2016, and then 4.7 for Trump this time around. So I apologize for that. But Trump, I think, is definitely doing pretty well in Texas. I think Joe Biden could definitely, you know, still win that state. 
but that would have to be a little bit of a stretch. I mean, I think that Biden's chances of winning Texas, the state that he's only down by literally 1%, is the same chance that Trump has of winning Pennsylvania, a state that Trump is down by around 5 6%. And I think that everybody doesn't think, and I don't think anyone really thinks that Joe Biden has a very good shot at the state of Texas. So Texas is definitely, you know, pulling in a lot of votes. And this New York Times article, I mean, just shows that Trump led by 16 percentage points among people who intended to vote on election day, according to an ABC News Washington Post poll. This is an A-plus rated pollster on 538. And Joe Biden has an almost 2-to-1 advantage over those who plan to vote before then. Honestly, I would ignore these polls about when people are going to vote because it really differs you know, by region, I think that most of the voters in those really key states that are probably going to vote earlier, and most voters in, you know, states that are not as important, like California, I think, or not as important, but just not as close, I think they're going to vote more on election night or by mail instead of early in-person voting. So for Trump to have to win this race right now, he is uh, behind Biden in every single state that has, you know, basically is close, and for Trump to win, he would have to see a little bit of a red wave, but I would not go calculate, I mean, what percentage of Biden voters are going to vote by mail or vote early, and then what percentage of Trump voters are going to vote in person and see who's going to win. Personally, I think that, in my opinion, if Joe Biden in a normal election would win Michigan, let's use Michigan for example, I think that in a normal election, if Joe Biden would win Michigan, I think that he's still going to win this race even if we're doing mail-in ballots, you know, more than ever and all of that. I mean, in 2016, 25% of the votes were mail-in ballots. So really, I don't think it's going to change too much. I don't think this whole mail-in ballot early voting situation with COVID-19 is going to really affect this election. So taking a look at the uh, voting statistics for each state, and then you can see that Joe Biden is doing pretty well right here with the Democratic vote at 49.5% to Republicans with 27.5% and no party affiliation, 22.4%. Now, what I meant earlier about, you know, not worrying about those polls and how I think that it's really not going to affect it, I just mean that if Joe Biden is doing well in Michigan, I don't think that this whole COVID-19 situation or anything like that is going to affect his chances at winning Michigan. I think he's going to win it. I don't think anything else is going to matter. So, I think that as long as he has the support, he's going to win the state. And, you know, those who are saying that voters are not too enthusiastic to vote for Joe Biden, that may be true. He's not the most exciting candidate. He is a well-liked candidate. He is viewed favorably by a majority of Americans. And his favorability right now is plus 6 to 7%. So people do like Joe Biden. Now, they might not love him, I guess, as much as Trump voters love Trump. But you got to understand that Democrats really right now, they really do have a you know, large amount of hatred for President Trump. And I think that that is what is driving a lot of them to vote, just their sheer hatred for the current president of the United States or their, you know, sheer dislike, I guess, to put it in better terms. So, you know, a lot of people are very disapproving of Trump's performance in office, and that is really going to drive turnout, I think, for Joe Biden. So I think that Joe Biden definitely did get lucky here. He is facing a pretty unpopular president, the most unpopular president in American history after, of course, popularity polls were created, I guess. So President Trump is literally the most unpopular president ever. I mean, his approval rating has never reached 50% after the month of January in 2017. So definitely his favorability is really really low and then taking a look at the total amount of people who have voted i mean obviously the highest in california followed by texas or actually no texas is higher than california which i think is really surprising but you gotta uh, think about the fact that california 6.5 million votes that is not too large of a chunk of california's population but in the state of California, California is a very solid democratic state. I don't think too many people are going to be as incentivized to vote in California than they are in Texas. Because I think that Republicans, they are all going to vote. They are all going to try to hold on to that state, which is very close right now for the Republican Party. And I think the Democrats are also going to vote because they want to flip the state for the first time in four decades. This is then, of course, followed by the state of Florida, where there are around 5.2 million votes. This is also another very, very close state between Biden and President Trump. And then we see a lot of other states, you know, barely any early votes in Michigan, 1.9 million, Pennsylvania, 1.4 million, and Wisconsin, 1.3 million, according to the U.S. election projects. Now, turnout as a percentage of the 2016 total turnout, you can see that some pretty high numbers we have here in Texas, 76.5% of the votes 
um, I'm not 76.5, but basically out of all the votes that have been already cast from Texas, it makes up 76.5% of the total votes that were cast in Texas in 2016, which is very, very significant. We are nine days until the election. We still expect a huge amount of voters to vote on election night. So 76.5% already, I think that is substantial. And I think that Texas is going to break voting records. California, 44.5%. Montana, also pretty high, 69.6%. The state of North Carolina, 62% as well. North Carolina started early voting in mail-in ballots very, very early. I think they were one of the first states. Georgia, 62%, another very close state. And then Florida, 55%. 0.2%. So this is good. I mean, either, you know, even if Trump wins or if Biden wins, I think the high turnout is good. More people participating in our democracy, I think, is a good thing for the country. And the mail-in ballots requested, we see, of course, the highest amount in California, because I don't think they are automatically mailed to you because there's so many people. I think you do have to request one. I do live here, but I'm not exactly too sure about that. Uh, I'm pretty sure they are not mailed, though. I think you do have to request one. Yeah, that's why... There are some requests from the state of California for a mail-in ballot. And then these are the actual results. I'm mean, not actual results. I don't want the actual results, but this is basically Politico uh, using data and you know from the U.S. Election Project, and they are using publicly available election data, basically party registration and stuff like that, to create a I guess an estimate or an estimate for the amount of votes that each candidate has received in these states. Now. Trump is expected to gain a lot of votes on election night, so make sure you keep that in mind when taking a look at these numbers. Biden is not doing this well in the state, you know, in the state of Arizona. In 2016, around 1.2 million were cast for Trump. Joe Biden is already at half of that right now. So mail-in ballots or the all of the early votes, I think, are pretty strong right now for both candidates. And, you know, just because um, there's a huge chunk of Democrats that were, uh, were supposed to vote early and a very small chunk of Republicans, I wouldn't trust those polls. Just I think whoever's going to win is going to win it. I don't think any of this is going to matter. So taking a look at the results here in Florida, well, not results, but estimates for votes in Florida. As you can see, Joe Biden is ahead by around 500,000 votes. He's at 2.3 million in 2016. Clinton won around 5, 4.5 million. So these numbers are pretty strong. I mean, we already have half the Democrats already have voted. We're definitely going to see a lot more on election night and in the next nine days. Um, Moving on, we have some more states. The state of Michigan, 111,000 or 1 million, uh, 1.1 million votes for Joe Biden already, according to this estimate, 600,000 for Biden. Now, the voting results here or the estimates, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I don't want to say results, but the estimates for Joe Biden and President Trump in Michigan are staggering. Joe Biden is doing very, very well in this area. I think definitely he's doing better here than any other area. These three states, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, the three most important states to Biden. He uh, he lost the state or Clinton lost the state by just 0.3%. She won 2.2% of the votes. Biden already halfway there. The state of, I believe, North Carolina, that is next. This state started early voting pretty quickly, 1.2 million votes, Trump 899,000 votes right now in terms of its estimate. And in 2016, Clinton was able to win 2.1 million, 2.3 for Trump. So Trump definitely is lacking here in the state of North Carolina, but I wouldn't worry about that too much if I was a Trump supporter. Even if I was a Biden supporter, I would not worry about that either. So the state of Pennsylvania, these numbers are very, very shocking. I mean, Joe Biden is destroying Trump in Pennsylvania. This is a state that, again, taking a look at our previous electoral map, it's 20 electoral votes are electoral votes that Trump cannot win the election without. This is one of the most important states for President Trump, and I think that this is definitely a very, very bad sign for the Trump campaign. This is probably the worst takeaway out of, you know, the worst results, I guess, or estimated results out of any of these states is the state of Pennsylvania, for President Trump, and of course, you have some, uh, votes who are not registered. For, you know, voters who are not registered. So we'll see how that all goes down on election night. Wisconsin, Joe Biden also doing very well, leading by around two hundred thousand votes here in the state of Wisconsin. And so, yeah, that is basically all of the states we have covered. So Joe Biden leads in all of them, but we expect Donald Trump to make up a little, a lot of ground on election night. 
And every single one of these states, I do expect to still go to Joe Biden. Again, do not trust all those polls saying how much of a percentage of Democrats will vote, how much of a percentage of Republicans will vote, and when they will vote, or how. You know, many people change their minds all the time. So I think that in terms of this issue, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, you know, I wouldn't worry about you know your candidate doing worse or better than you expected in these states. I would not worry about it. I think that as long as they're going to win fairly, they're going to win those states in a normal election. If they were going to win, they will win that state. So don't worry about that. And you know, I've always said that Joe Biden's doing very, very well in terms of its numbers, you know, alone, but his numbers are going to drop in terms of his percentage of the vote. So make sure you do not get complacent. Vote for whoever you want to vote for. I don't care if you're voting for Trump, voting for Biden. Vote for the candidate that you want to lead our country for the next four years. And, you know, make sure you get out and vote. It's one of the most patriotic things you can do. One of the most American things that you can do. So make sure you do not miss out on voting if it is available to you. I would suggest that you vote somehow in person. So voting early in person is the best way if you really want your vote to be cast and ensure that nothing happens to it or vote in person on election night and finally vote in person or vote by mail uh, I don't, I'm not I'm saying I'm not saying do all of these things that would be illegal I'm saying just do one of these things and I would say that vote by mail that would be your last resort because I think that it's better to vote in person than to vote by mail just to ensure that your vote actually gets in and so that will be it for this video make sure you join my discord server if you have not again the link is at the very top of the description below I also have launch channel memberships on this channel make sure you consider joining them as well and becoming a channel member that would be greatly appreciated thank you guys all so so much for watching watching this video, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see all of you guys in the next video.